and welcome to the Lord. Welcome back. If you're returning, my name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe because that is what we do here. Also, don't forget to give this video a like because that super helps me out knowing that you guys like this sort of thing. Also, it lets the algorithm know that we should boost this video up so more people see it and all that fun stuff. So please, don't forget to like this video. Also, quick announcement, we are quickly approaching 800 subscribers, um, and when we do, I'm going to be doing a super special cool live art stream where I draw your Final Fantasy characters for you guys. So, uh, if you have not yet, make sure you subscribe, because that's not going to happen until we hit 800. Alright. That you stand here before me is proof that Haloni smiles upon me this day. I have need of your assistance, Burr, and before you think to run away screaming in terror, I pray you hear me out. Oh my god. <laughs> it concerns the esteemed, and now missing and presumed dead, Knights of the Heavens Ward. None have returned to the capital since all the unpleasantness began, yet recently we have heard rumors of these honored sirs walking the streets. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> Tis heresy most foul, I say, and I mean to get to the bottom of it. But we will need all the help that we can get, which means fury take me. We could benefit from a certain individual's serendipity. Besides, if we don't seek him out, he's like to show up at the worst possible time anyway. At least this way, it'll be on our terms, and we can keep an eye on that boy, Mehmet. Mammoth. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, you must be wondering why I asked you to come. Well, you and the inspector seem to enjoy a natural rapport, so... Praise that lonely. For a moment I was afraid you'd make me beg. This may well be my last chance to prove my worth to my superiors, and if I can't... <clears throat> do for Tom better. Alright, I'll help you save your job, but I just I can't make any promises. Because, Gigi, such behavior is unbecoming a gentleman. But why, Papa Hildy? Why is it unbecoming a gentleman? Ah, Inquisitor Sir, Burr, good evening to you both. Are you come as adoring fans or on business? Business. Always business, you may rest assured. Then I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am at your service. Is it robbery? Murder? Tax avoision? Avoision? I... Wait, before we get into that, what's going on here? Much as it pains me to admit it, my beloved Gigi, the apple of my eye, the fruit of my loins, attempted to deface this lovely gazebo. Naturally, as his father, it falls to me to see him return to the straight and narrow. That's not true. I was drawing a family crest for our home. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Now, Gigi, I know you are fond of this gazebo, as are we all, but it belongs to Lord Edmund. You wouldn't want to steal from Uncle Edmund, would you? I... I guess not. Then where is our gazebo, Papa Hildy? And does it have a warm stove with a steaming kettle, too? <laughs> Oh, Gigi, don't you see? We have no need of kettles or gazebos. As gentlemen inspectors, the world is our oyster. We can go whither we please, where the red bird grows or the wild rose blooms. And yet you've been sleeping in Ed Lord Edmund's gazebo for how long? I don't care about wild roses. I want to live in a gazebo with Papa Hildy and Mama the Shoe. Gazebos are quite expensive, and dangerous if not domesticated. Dangerous indeed, my boy. And besides, we are gentlemen inspectors free to travel the length and breadth of Eorzea in search of a case. Does that not sound more thrilling than whittling away the hours beneath a gazebo? I guess. Oh, he just wants to hang out in a gazebo. 
If it's a case you want, you need not go so far. We are currently investigating reports of individuals masquerading as Knights of the Heavens Ward. Those, these contemptible charlatans are rumored to have tricked several hapless maidens into attending private parties for a small fee, with the promise of enjoying the company of these great sares. Those who were foolish enough to attend found their experiences to be so traumatizing that they have refused to discuss them in detail. Needless to say, your assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated, and for it, you shall receive due compensation. Say no more, Inquisitor, say no more. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am well versed in the ways of the fairer sex. <laughs> oh no. Since when? Not mama. Mummy! <coughs> Mother, dearest, I was under the impression you had departed for Ulda. And leave my beloved boy to keep on playing at being an inspector, as well as a father to a bloody mammoth? Bugger that. You're coming home right this instant. How can you say such things? It's my life's calling to be an inspector, and Gigi is my son. He is a Mandeville man. Grand! Grand as it is to see you, you have come at a most inopportune time. The young women of Ishgard are in need of a champion to defend them from fiends most foul. Come, Deshu. Come, Gigi. We shall demonstrate to my mother our peerless investigative skills and bring these criminals to justice. Thal's balls, he's stubborn. Probably gets it from his sorry arse of a father. I trust you lot'll help me to keep him out of trouble. Right then, come along. Huh? Well, that could have gone better than worse. Let's not keep them waiting. Please, do you think me so foolish to fall for their charade? From what I heard from the others, said knights bore not even the slightest resemblance to the heavens ward, as if I had not already memorized every detail of my dear Sir Aldefell's face. Oh, wherever could he be? I am truly outside her grace, my allowance, all gone to waste on those, those, uh, I dare not say it. Mayhap those awful rumors are true, mayhap. I must needs accept that he now walks in Helone's halls. I demand satisfaction, swift and terrible vengeance. How dare they prey upon a lady's emotions to line their pockets with kill. If Sir Charabert were here, he'd purge the lot of them like the festering sickness they are. Ah, yes. A pity he too remains missing. So very much a pity. <laughs> Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, that grandmama over there is staring at us. Now, Gigi, a gentleman must be more careful with his words. First of all, you have only one grandmother. <laughs> Second, and this is tremendously important, never ever call her that. At least, not yet. Promise? Yes, Father. I promise not to call Grandmama Julian, Grandmama Julian. Rat row. Greetings, m'lady. How oh, ain't you a charmer? And there I was thinking I might have to rip your bloody head off I, if you said the G word one more time. Like that, Papa Hildy? Ah, my faithful assistants. Have you gleaned any new information? Other than the fact that these women scorned seemed to detest the fake knights with every fiber of their being. These two women were telling me all about what they do if they cornered Sir. Is this the best ye can do then? Bloody oaths and girlish fantasies. And ye call yourself a Manderville man. I assure you, Mother, we are only just getting started. The tapestry of lies and deception behind which the truth hides is oft unraveled with the tug of a single loose thread. I say, young lady, I would beg but a moment of your time. Oh my gosh. Somehow I doubt that young lady was targeted by the charlatans we seek. 
Hi, cheers, true. I was too was taken in by the false promises of those awful, awful men. Long have I yearned for a chance to meet Sir Val Green, so when they said I finally could, I didn't hesitate for even a moment. But when they escorted me to the manor and undid the blindfold, and I looked on those hideous faces of those so-called grand stairs, I screamed and fled. They were gone when I returned with the watch, but the neighbors said they had overheard them speaking about seeking shelter in a place called Idleshire. I know it's not much, but I pray this information helps you in your search. My lady, I swear to you here and now, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall not rest until these dastardly fiends are punished for their foul crimes. Huzzah! Three cheers for Papa Hildy! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! And there you have it! Our quarry can be found in Idleshire. Come, by the way, little assistance. Justice waits for no gentlemen. That's all well and good. But I've never heard of this Idleshire, have you? <laughs> She's like, I am! <laughs> You mean, we're to travel to the Dravidian hinterlands? Right now, just like that. Truly, this magnificent settlement is a testament to the hard work and camaraderie of her Uplander and Gabi citizens. Yes, well, I'm just glad we are no longer being pursued by fire-breathing dragons, musket-wielding crabs, and bomb-throwing goblins. You know, the other ones. <laughs> but they were no match for Lady Julian and that pen of hers, am I right? I want to say, her ma see her make the bad gobbies fly again. God's sakes, Hildy. Except in Burr, this lot would be dead in a ditch somewhere if it weren't for me. Nonsense. I would never let any harm come to my loyal sister or my beloved son. Um, if I may interject. Now then, let us split up and question the good people of Idleshire. My keen inspector's sense tells me that one of them has knowledge of the false knights we seek. Psh, God. Yes, yes, Lord Jack's nose of Grand's hair. Sneaky uplanders keep to selves. Mingle not with gobby flock, but each to own, Lord Jack says. No questions, only jingly shine. Jingly shine, you say? Oh, you must be talking about them Grand Sayers. They drifted into Idleshire some time ago, as I recall. Pay visits to the Great Library, though I couldn't tell you why. Whoa, hey, it's that. Is this the same lady? Oh, I know all about the Grand Sayers. They keep to themselves in that building of theirs, south of the round spot. You'd best watch out, though. They're a very dangerous bunch, liable to kill you for looking at them cockeyed. It's entirely possible that I've gone completely and utterly mad, but are you perchance the long lost twin sister of an Ishgardian noble woman? What? Hi. Er, look behind you, a three headed gooboo. Uh oh. Why do I feel like I've not seen the last of that old woman? If only we had the testimony of a concerned citizen which could conveniently direct us to the villain's precise location. The Grand Sayers are holed up in a building to the south of the markets. Good show, Burr. <laughs> there, that's the one. Come, let's inform the others. How convenient. It's right there. It should seem that no one is home. There is not we can do but wait then. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, I just want to say that that I really like this place. I think that you and me and Mama and Ashu could have lots of exciting adventures if we stay here. Hmm. You may be right, Gigi. This community seems to have fostered an enlightened, free society, welcoming of honest souls willing to work and contribute to the greater whole. Today, you would happen to see a gazebo on the way in. Cute. 
as I live in Shkar, Hildebrand, Helendor, Maximilian, Mandeville. Could that be? I say, could that be? Slowfix coined us. Do you know this Gobby Inspector? I most certainly do. Why, Master Flo Slowfix was my very first employer. Oh, <laughs> Shka. We're traveling through Thanalan long ago, Gobby Flock was away laid by Uplander bandits. With no jiggly shine to pay brass blades, we had no way back to back take goods. Until we make busy deal with gentleman Uplander, that is. With fastness, he finds Uplander bandits and brings much baggy boom and returns to goodly Gobby's missing goods in great justice. Henceforth, Slowfix gains new appreciation for Uplanders. But for chance encounter with gentleman Uplander, he never conceives of egalitarian utopia. Shkah! One may even claim he'll be a founding father of Idleshire, with metaphorical tongue flaps, that is. Oh. <laughs> oh, the memories. It was a near thing, for the bandits were clever enough to see through my ingenious disguise as an innocent milkmaid. But in my haste to escape, I tripped over a barrel of fire sand and... As they see, say, boom, gummy, doom. Corn, no busy deals for the wicked. No busy deals indeed. But leaving that delightful anecdote aside, ye gods, Master Slowfix, just look at you and your flock and made of these runes is making me big eyes. Gobby Flock has come long way since wandering days, but we have not forgotten, gentlemen, Uplander's kindness. Slowfix is here to offer hand lending. Well, far be it for me to refuse. My son Gigi has grown quite fond of your magnificent, magnificent city, and so I should like to stay here with him and my assistant for a time. We would not require much in the way of accommodations. A humble gazebo, for example, would more than suffice. Why settle for a gazebo when perfectly good estate right behind you? Residents are building in arrears and slow fix happy to evict them. But, but we were pursuing the fiends who lived here on suspicion of defrauding young women. Fraud? In Slowfix's egalitarian utopia, this he will not abide. All the more reason to let gentlemen Uplander and his flock stay instead of Grand Sirs. No need for Jiggly Shine either. Huzzah! A giant gazebo to call our own! <laughs> Aye, I do not know what to say. Thank you, Master Slowfix, thank you. No need for teary eye tongue flaps. Gobby Flock is possessed of moral obligation to repay gentle, Gentleman Uplander for past generosity. Enjoy new gazebo and good luck with Hunt for Grand Sirs. Um, Papa Hildy, since this is our gazebo, is it okay if I draw our family crest on it? I can think of no better way to celebrate this joyous occasion, and perhaps draw the ire of our new homes for tenants. Come, let us go and purchase some paints together. This gazebo shall be our canvas. That's <laughs> adorable. Now he's gone and gotten himself a sodding gazebo. Bloody hells, if he really thinks I'm going to let him keep on playing at being a father. She's so concerned. She's so concerned. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. That's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> nobody comes to see it. Still no sign of the notorious Grand Sayers. I dare say, dare say we're going to need more paint. Ah, oh, 
But what is it pains me to admit it? A gentleman's stamina is not without limits. I dare say I could do with a spot of tea. <laughs> hey, Inspector. Is it just me, or have those two been looking at us for the past few minutes? <gasps> Ooh. They're not intimidating at all. Oh, tis quite normal behavior for my adoring fans, I should think. When finally presented with an opportunity to meet their idol in the flesh, all too many succumb to their fear and flee. <laughs> or maybe, just maybe, they're the grand bloody sayers. Come on, come on, they're getting away. Just maybe. Good old Hildy. It's like, you know, he's full of himself, but he's so, like, I don't know, naive that I don't think he realizes. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's very strange. Hearken to me, you dastardly rapscallions. You have nowhere to run. Reveal yourselves at once. I shall not ask you again. Come forth, Grand Sayers. Name yourselves and answer for your misdeeds. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the music! They have a thousand thousand worms, the silver spear which hath pierced the very heavens. Ooland! Master of magics, ancient and awesome, the divine hand which hath defeated all maladies save sense and incontinence. Good spark! Good spark. Grand Sears Excelsior! I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Mayhap both. Grand Sires! <coughs> Grand Sires! You stand accused of willfully and unlawfully convincing young maidens of Ishgard to attend private parties under false pretenses thereby inflicting upon them terrible financial and emotional distress. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am come on behalf of these poor defenseless innocents, and to see that no others are made to suffer as they did. Now, lay down your arms and surrender yourselves into my custody. Ha! The audacity of this boy. You should feel ashamed of your words and deeds. Here's some forward vibe. Yes, I can see that. So dear. <laughs> Not sure. You will rue this day and rue it hard. It's lagging. God, how I've missed this. The air streaming past, the blood pumping. The taste of copper on my lips, the slight dizziness. Oh no. It was on a day like this that we met, wasn't it? That when we soared into those azure skies, we never truly came back down. Do my eyes deceive, pigs me of my heart, descended from Helone's halls to guide me to her bosom. <laughs> what the heck is going on? <laughs> my beloved, my everything, long have I waited for this moment. Take me in your arms once more and lift me higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher! 
Oh dear. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Ugh. Oh gosh. Alas, poor Orland. I knew him not in the slightest. <laughs> but he seemed a decent man. Chicanery and attempted murder notwithstanding. You will rule this day and rule it hard. Wait, I've seen this before, all too recently. Uh, yes, anyway, he's only mostly dead. If the master of magic's ancient and awesome here acts with all haste, the man may yet be saved. You are referring to me. I see, I see. With all haste, was it? Yes, yes, I'll get right on that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mournful voice of creation, send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thrall to command, that I may smite. No, wait, that's so good. Hmm. Let me see. Something of a rather less controversial tradition, yeah. Something with more. Pip! A vortex of biting winds to rend the flesh and smite my foes. <laughs> foes? I thought you were friends. Oh gosh, he's worse than that shoe. <laughs> Gasp, cough, cough. Sit right at booger me with a bleeding game ball. My back, my back. Grr, turn to see my vendor estimated you lot. That uh, makes two of us. <laughs> Enough! Leave them be, or do you not care what becomes of the mebet? Oh no, Gigi! This old lady? Gigi, but when? How? I love her eyeshadow. I thought I recognized you. First in Ishgard, then in Idleshire. You've been following us since we left the capital. Bearer of faces, fair and fearsome, the midnight shadow which hath deceived kings and queens. Doris! <laughs> Doris. You can't possibly have been so naive as to think we'd not see through your ridiculous disguises. And yet here you are, so effortlessly and easily lured into our trap, for which we are most grateful, mind. My companions are hardly cut out for life on the road. All has been in preparation for this moment. The parties, the petty schemes from the first. The objective of this grand design has been the singular Mehmet. I swear to you, if you harm Gigi in any way. We have no desire to hurt the boy, but we require his help to reclaim that which is rightfully ours. Our youth. <laughs> Come 
around it. I can't see. Damn. They're very slowly getting away. <laughs> GG! Stay strong, my son. I swear I shall find you. We're just gonna sit here and watch him go. <laughs> Why? Twelve, strike me down for a fool. So desperate was I to seize the Grand Sarahs that I failed to discern their true intent before it was too late. And now poor GG is in their clutches. What if I never see my beloved son again? I suppose we have to be prepared for the worst. They could be halfway to Radza Han by now. I very much doubt that, given that they were moving at an Anamantoise's pace. The little milk soup milk sups right. Let's get after the old buggers. Goyabi. Huh. That's what my mentor used to call me. Among other things. Oh the memories. So it seems that the Grand Sarahs have been caught once more by the very inspector that was trying to catch them. Trying to catch them. How ironic. Also, how premature. We have them, yes, but they still have Gigi. Damn it. If only some manner of opportunity would present itself. Ask and ye shall receive. We can ambush that wise and dragoon, take him hostage, and demand an exchange. Inquisitor, sir, you disappoint. A gentleman cannot condone the violent kidnapping and ransom of his elders. No, no, we shall approach this problem as paragons of honor and virtue. Burr will stalk and subdue the Grand Zare, then relieve him of his armor. <laughs> How is stripping an old man naked more gentlemanly than taking him hostage? Rest assured, I shall reveal all soon enough. Godspeed, Burr. <laughs> She's just like, okay. <laughs> huh? I knew you'd... Wait, who are you again? There's something awfully familiar about those muscular forearms. Those strong yet tender-looking fingers. I say... Would you be so kind as to massage my shoulders, young lady? There's this lingering ache, this tension that Gonspark can't seem to soothe with his magics. And she's like, um... <laughs> Remove my breastplate? Oh, of course. How silly of me. Pray lend me a hand with the straps. Oh my goodness. Truly, young lady, you are a saint. Ah, I swear it's the little things you begin to appreciate. My dear departed wife used to help me with my armor, you know. Right, right, I should be seated to better receive your tender ministrations. We're actually going to give him a massage. Oh my goodness. From the air, from above. Ah, the healing tingle. With that I had a tincture of salamander with which to treat these aches. My little pig's knee used to spread some on my chest and under my nose to help me sleep through the night. Come, do not be shy. Work those soothing fingers into each and every knot. Slowly. Make me forget my troubles. Oh no! Why are we doing this? Harder. Harder. Higher. Higher. Close your eyes and dream. The old dragoon's soft story suddenly stops and you begin to feel you may have borne witness to his final moments. Leaning closer, you extend a hesitant finger. Only well, to stop short when a sudden spasm signals the resumption of his labored breathing. With the utmost care, you remove Orland's sabatons and breaches, leaving the sleeping old man exposed to the elements, and at the mercy of the nearby ravenous bears and tentacled warbles, may he rest in peace. <laughs> ah, my Salwar to assist him. By your return, I gather you're taking care of the dragoon. And by taking care, I mean afford him all due courtesy as befitting a man of his years, while returning with the equipment I require. Capital! Though without further ado, I shall disguise myself as Orland and free Gigi from captivity. Captivity. <laughs> captivity. But you two look nothing alike. They may be old and slow, but they're not blind. 
Oh, ye of little faith, you are in for a treat. You shall have a front row seat to the magnificent display of Mandervillian guile and subterfuge. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, is it time for dinner yet? We just ate you, daft bugger. Uh, where the hell's his orlet? I know he's got to take a piss every hour, but damn it, he could at least be quick about it. <laughs> Poor Gigi. Greetings, fellow antediluvians. I have returned. Oh, bollocks. It's about time. <laughs> He's like, it worked. Okay, no, that's bollocks. <sighs> Pack up your things. I want us back in the road in ten minutes. Before we do that, we must first release young Gigi here. Tis behavior of becoming a gentleman to keep children in cages. What in the seven hills are you blathering about? He's going to get away. No, he will not. See? Still here within my care. Right then, on a completely unrelated note, I shall now take the boy with me on a brief sojourn. Sojourn into the wilderness. Fury, take me. It's working. He's about to walk out of there with Gigi, and they won't even try to stop him. So far, so good. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm cold and there are more bulls after me. I'm me, but you're also me. But this, that can't be unless... This is it. This is the moment when my life flashes before my eyes. Oh, my dearest Pigsy, we'll be together at last. Buster, how dare you attempt to trick me with a ruse so hackneyed it would make a minstrel blush. You gods, I have never realized that I would hurt so much. Now's our chance, Gigi. Come with me. Vivi, wait! <gasps> Vivi! My son, what's gotten into you? Vivi, 
BB, where have I heard that name before? Remember who you are, VV. What you are. A creation of the great Charl Charlayan Archnagus Quan. Quan. Quan, I... I was given life by... Grandpapa Quan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he remembered! And it really is VV. What? What exactly do you remember, my son? Everything. Yes, everything. I remember that Grandpa Buckwan created me. That he took care of me, raised me, and that we were very happy. But then, but then he abandoned me. Grandpa Buckwan abandoned me. He believed you were flawed, Vivi. That you lacked the power to turn back the hands of time and make him young again. And so, in his ignorance, he cast you out and died all alone. To turn back the hands of time, then what we witnessed in the Crozier with the Duke's Prince's vase, that power could be brought to bear on people? But wait, how do you know all of this? You couldn't have possibly been associates of this Archimagus Quan. We found his journals during one of our many trips into the Great Library, scavenging for, for, for valuable relics is one of the few ways we have left to make a living. We were famed heroes of the war in our prime with fortunes to match, but no soldier has the strength to triumph over time, and before we knew it, the hour of the sheath was upon us. Ishgard no longer had need of our services, so we came here to eke out a living, to keep doing what we do best until our bodies wouldn't let us. Imagine our surprise when we stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime. A second lifetime, as it were. And then met with the power to take that which was broken and restore it to its prime st state. To turn back time with its temporal magics and give us back our misspent youth. Huh. <sighs> Fury, take me. This is also... I don't even know if there's a precedent to determine whether or not this constitutes heresy. <laughs> we knew where to look, even. With the journals, we determined that the man met was somewhere in the Western Highlands. A chance, for a second chance, was within reach. And then we were forced to watch as you imbeciles pulled Vivi from the snow, nearly ruining everything. Vivi, listen to me. Come with us and we can help you to unlock your true potential. Just think what you could accomplish were you to master your magics. Not only could you make us young again, but you may even have the power to restore life to Archimagus Quan. <laughs> Impossible. No magic can truly return the dead to us. At best, you can animate a corpse. And I need not review the, pre the precepts to declare that the products of necromancy are abominations in the eyes of the Puri. <laughs> Gigi, wait! What of our adventures? What of our gazebo? You are a man of Ilbevet. You have always been so kind to me, Papa Hildy, and I will forever be grateful for that. But Grandpa Bakwan made me. He had he made me and I miss him. So even if it fails I have to try. What are you doing? They're getting away. We have to stop them. Mayhap we must respect Gigi's decision. So that's the end of that chapter, eh? You're giving up and coming back home? I too made a decision long ago to become a traveling inspector, and I have ever stood by it. May happen is from this singular stubbornness of mine that Gigi took inspiration. Nay, I cannot abide it. He is my flesh and blood, my son. I dare not let him use his temporal magics to pervert the natural order. I it falls to me, his father, to ensure that Gigi keeps to the righteous path and only utilizes traditional methods of zombification to raise the dead. 
Oh yes, the traditional zombification methods. Inquisitors here, I must applaud your dedication to your work and cannot thank you enough for all you have done on our behalf. Yet I fear if we continue as we are, Gigi may dry be driven to rash action. Therefore I would ask that you suspend your pursuit of the Grand Sayers for a time, that I might be afforded the opportunity to convince my son to return peacefully. Well, seeing as how we can only guess at the full extent of Gigi's powers, it might prove dangerous to act aggressively should he choose to use them. I knew you would understand. Right, then. There is no time to waste. Now, Shu, let us retire to our new gazebo and discuss our plans. New gazebo. I suppose it would have been a shame had he given up that easily, though that means I'll have to stick around even longer. On the other hand, if that bloody mammoth's really got the power to make them young again, then... <laughs> Ah, I see you saw fit to return to the capital as well. The Inquisition has a rather large collection of heretical tomes, including many of Charlet in origin, and I had a mind to scour them for information on temporal magics. This is, of course, all for the sake of... Confirming the Mammoth's heretical origins. Yes, only that. Hmm? Why are you looking at me like that? As if it to imply that my interest in these matters is more than a professional one. I'm sure I don't know what you are not talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Burr. That will be all. So funny. Oh, it's me, me. <laughs> Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.